This is Focus on Your Health. It's brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center in historic Kingman, Arizona. I'm T.G. Lafredo. In January, we brought you a program about the Mojave County Community Health Improvement Plan. This is an extensive survey to gain a deeper understanding from residents about various issues related to their quality of life, access to essential services, physical and mental well-being, and more. The insights from this survey aid in strategic planning, steering efforts to foster a healthier environment for everyone in Mojave County. The 2024 data have been collected and the information has been processed. The next steps are to share those findings and determine where we go from here. In September, KRMC hosted a kickoff meeting, including hospital staff, employees of the Mojave County Department of Public Health, and the general public. This week on the program, we're bringing you highlights of that meeting, as well as your opportunity to get involved. Before we jump in, a few terms. You'll hear mention of the CHA, that's the Community Health Assessment. You'll hear about the CHIP, that's the Community Health Improvement Plan. You'll be hearing from Diana Lilitsa Sivimal, Ph.D. She's the manager of the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. And you'll hear from Anthony Santarelli, Ph.D., Director of Research and Sponsored Programs. Here's Dr. Lilitsa Sivimal. Welcome everyone to this morning to this exciting adventure as we shift from the community health assessment stage to the community health improvement stage with today's kickoff. And if I do start talking pretty fast, please raise your hand and slow me down because I have had a lot of caffeine this morning. (laughs) So once again, I would like to officially welcome you to the CHIP kickoff. This is a long continuous process that happens every three to five years with a long-term strategic goal of being able to improve the health, safety, and wellness and quality of life of our Mojave County community. It is a, the Chip and the Cha are both led by the Live Well Mojave Initiative, which um, was originally formed by the Mojave County Department of Public Health, represented here, as well as Cayman Regional Medical Center, also represented here. But Live Well Mojave could not act alone. It is also made up of many different stakeholders from law enforcement, faith-based organizations, charities, both profit and nonprofit. We have the courts, we have schools, we have colleges, we have many, many people that come together to try to improve the health and wellness of our community. So the first thing I want to discuss is community engagement. Community engagement is the heart of participating and having active change in community health. As we present to you all of this data, I want you to think about how you and your organizations can start to to build on the strength and resources within our community, how we can empower and share resources among all our different organizations, uh, what kind of research and action we can take for mutual benefit of our community members, and how we can promote co-learning and capacity building as, as we emphasize local relevance and ecological perspective. You know, community is a huge part of our, our identities. It's where we live, work, play, age. So we want to make sure that any changes that we enact are going to be lasting. We want to have continuous systematic development through cyclical and, and iterative processes. We want to be able to disseminate the findings both here today and as we go through the CHIP process to all of our community members and be able to involve as many people as possible and break down those silos. We want to have a long-term commitment to the partnership process. And a huge part of this is because public health is everywhere and involves all of us. Public health is an ecosystem. This ranges from our schools to our neighborhood organizations or civic groups or nonprofits or nursing homes, community centers, home health, mental health, healthcare organizations, faith organizations, tribal health, corrections, elected officials, fire, transit, employers, doctors, hospitals, EMS schools, and probably many other people that I haven't mentioned here. The framework that the Chip and the Cha is based off of is called Mobilizing for Action Through Planning and Partnership. If you've done community health planning before, you've probably heard of the map. This was developed by the National Association of County and City Health Officials, or NACHO, probably my favorite abbreviation, uh, back in 2001, though it has since been updated last year. It's been streamlined a little bit more. So now the uh, MAP 2.0 goal is to achieve health equity. And this is done through three major phases. Our first phase is to build the Community Health Improvement Plan Foundation. So 
as of today, where are we? The point of this phase is to start where you are. So figuring out what are our current resources, what strategies are we currently using, what has changed since the last cycle of the chip in the top. Okay. We also have the next phase to tell the community story. So to uh, to assess what is going on in the community. So using the qualitative research through focus groups, key informants, quantitative research through our community surveys, as well as secondary resources through uh, state and federal bio repositories, uh, data repositories, sorry, being able to assess where we are and also being able to tell the story of where we're going as well. Phase three is to continuously improve the community. So coming up with those implementation strategies as well as data and evaluation monitoring for the future to make sure that any needs that were identified can have those priorities actually addressed for the next three to five years and the, the action is actually taken. Uh, MAP is based off of several foundational principles. The idea is that there is always continuous learning that allows for uh, ever-evolving, adaptable, flexible responses to our ever-changing, diverse communities. We want to make sure that as we're building these community partnerships, that they're going to be inclusive and foster a sense of belonging. That we want to build trusted relationships that honor the voices of people that bring their expertise and knowledge to the table. And we want to be able to empower the community to take action. Any action that is taken should be informed by actual qualitative and quantitative data, and it should be informed by the voice of the community. Next is uh, building those strategic collaborations among various community partners and stakeholders, and being able to finally lead to full spectrum action through community building and leading to our ultimate goal of achieving health equity. To this end, uh, the Live Well Mojave Initiative in Mojave County is a broad community-based initiative that engages the public and community stakeholders in efforts to improve the health, safety, and quality of life of our Mojave County communities. Live Well Mojave has several goals for the child and chip process, namely being to build powerful community partnerships and to break down silos when it comes to healthcare needs and issues. We want to be able to maximize the resources that we already have, and we want to reduce the duplication of effort. We want to be able to empower the community to work together to improve public health, and then we want to follow best practice guidelines for health programs and strategic planning in local hospitals and public health departments. The CHA provides the Livable Mojave uh, Initiative, as well as many other Mojave County health divisions and other county departments and agencies, community-based organizations, and many other stakeholders with a comprehensive summary of leading health issues that are affecting our Mojave County residents. The goal of the CHIP is to provide these key priorities and strategies of what to address, particularly those social determinants of health, that will lead to improvements in health outcomes. And it basically lays out the plans of how this is going to be addressed. That was Diana Lilitsa Sivimal, PhD. She's the manager of the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. Next, you'll hear from Anthony Santarelli, PhD, director of Research and Sponsored Programs. He'll be talking about data collection and findings. One of the important things whenever we do collect community health data, it's important to follow a set of prescribed methodology to ensure that the broadest spectrum of information can be collected. For the community health needs assessment, we used a diverse array of data collection procedures using evidence-based both qualitative and quantitative methods that tried to give a voice to our residents for health programming. So just in brief, the four primary data sources used in the community health needs assessment, which will be published early 2025, consisted of 1,473 community survey responses. These were about 70 to 75 question surveys. We then got the opportunity to sit down with 34 key informants to conduct a 30 minute to 60 minute semi-structured interview conducted in April to April, May. So a key informant is a diverse group of individuals that exist in leadership positions from county to city governments, healthcare providers, and business owners within the region. They are kept anonymous as part of publishing this. We don't want to inhibit them 
indicating their views, and we'll actually have a couple of quotes up here for what they indicated. Daniela Ghana did a fantastic job running seven community focus groups located throughout our major cities. And then we, of course, included hospital visit and discharge data from about 618,000 unique presentations into Kingman Regional Medical Center for the health needs and health concerns. So you see, as we move through this, we have community opinions and perceptions, opinions and perceptions of leaders within the community, open roundtable discussions with residents, and then I will often refer to them as harder numbers for what people are actually interfacing with the medical system to get taken care of directly. So we'll walk through some of that data, and I'd like to start first with the results of some of the questions from our community surveys. Now, before we go into the direct results of those, it's important to align who responded to those surveys for how well they represent our population in Mojave County. In general, the community health needs assessment respondents represent higher educational attainment than is kind of diverse across Mojave County, likely due to uh, it being disseminated from public health groups, from the hospital, and, and some of the large groups coming in there. But we do see that the greatest number of responses have received some college through graduate and professional degrees. Our community health needs assessment respondents are typically older than the general Mojave County population, with the greatest number of responses coming from individuals aged somewhere between 35 uh, and 74 years old. When we look at their household income of individuals responding onto the survey, we're really happy uh, to report that they mirror Mojave County's household income rates. And then the individuals typically live in a household of one or two other individuals. These are couples that are responding, or these are uh, couples with a single child or maybe uh, a parent that they're providing care to. So one of the most important questions we asked on this health needs assessment are personal health challenges. These are challenges that the respondents deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, either with their own health or a health of someone directly related to them. So the most common with about 13% of individuals indicating the highest uh, personal health challenges, issues related to weight, overweight, uh, obesity, issues related to aging, joint and back pain, um, and then of course high blood pressure. We see a general uptick in overweight and obesity for our residents throughout Kingman and Bullhead City, a little bit lower of concern in Havasu. We can then move on to perceptions for community health needs when we ask our residents and they diverge quite a bit from personally reported health challenges, with the most important perceived health need of the community is mental health services, um, with about 19 or some odd percent indicating that as a major need in the county. Uh, that doesn't map onto the personal health challenges, but it is here as a, as a primary driver for perception throughout the community. Those are higher, a higher rate of individuals throughout Kingman and Bullhead City report that as a need. Of course, a lower rate in Havasu and throughout our rural areas indicate that as a general need. Aging problems cropped up as number two, uh, with the highest rate of individuals reporting that as a community health problem existing in Havasu, that general area. And then a surprise to me and my team was motor vehicle accidents and crashes were a number were the number three concern across the county. Though the miner did just publish an article indicating that we seem to have a really high rate of that right now, and it seems like the community has picked up on that before, well, at least the scientists in my office have managed to pick up on that. If you're just joining us, this is Focus on Your Health. I'm T.G. Lafredo, and this week on the program, we're bringing you the kickoff meeting from the Mojave County Community Health Improvement Plan. You're hearing from Anthony Santarelli, Ph.D., Director of Research and Sponsored Programs. You've heard from Diana Lalitza Sivimal, Ph.D. She's the manager of the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. They are discussing the methods of collecting information for the survey and the data so far, as well as the next steps. And stick around because you'll have your opportunity to become involved. We then move into questions about social determinants of health. These are social factors, things like transportation, things like housing, things like economic security, poverty, that have long-term and lasting impacts onto the health and wellness of an individual. So these are our social barriers to becoming a healthier community, 
And the respondents of the survey indicate that the highest is endemic poverty, with about 14% of individuals seeing that as a major limitation to improving the health of the county, followed by a general lack of providers, and then a lack of affordable housing really skyrockets off in Havasu, with over 20% of individuals identifying that as a dire social need. We can zoom into a couple of other social determinants of health, one of which being food security. But 11.4% of respondents to this survey indicate struggling to procure enough food to feed themselves and their family uh, on a monthly basis. So food appears to be a fairly dire social need. We're in a food desert. I think this doesn't come as a surprise to most of this audience. And then we also wanted to look at major transportation concerns. So this is the average distance individuals throughout the county, Kingman, Bullhead, Havasu, and our rural areas travel to receive health care. And 21.1% of respondents in total travel greater than 30 miles to interface with a health system. That's a bit too far, particularly for things like routine checkups, routine medical services. That's quite a bit of money whenever we're dealing with, with poverty as well. So I, I said we'd dive a little bit more down into healthcare access, and we'll spend a little bit more time on these slides. I'll walk you through the graph, uh, but survey respondents consistently report that healthcare is more difficult to access in Bullhead City and throughout rural areas in our county. That doesn't mean it's easy to access in Havasu or Kingman. Um, and what we see here is these are the number of respondents who indicate that they lack an ease of access into different varieties of healthcare providers, with about 43% indicating a complete lack of access uh, to specialist care, about 32% indicating a lack of access to mental health care, about 25% indicating a lack of easy access into primary care, 20% indicating a lack of access to dental care, 15% feel like they're unable to use an emergency department or urgent care facility. Now, these numbers are higher in Bullhead and in our rural areas, which make a little bit more sense, considering they're traveling a much longer distance to access these. But they are shockingly high, even in our more uh, urbanized areas throughout the county. We then ask them, if you have difficulty accessing these services, why is that? So for specialist care, fairly uniformly throughout the county and our regions is that there's none in the area. Um, and largely we do see that from the hospital perspective as well. It's difficult to recruit specialist physicians and we often have to send services either up to Las Vegas, over to Flagstaff, down to Maricopa County. We have a very limited pool in the area. For mental health, our respondents feel uncomfortable using these services. There's still a preponderance of stigma against getting help for things like mental health or substance use. For primary care, the large driver are, are, is twofold. Uh, either the providers are not accepting new patients, which I believe our providers are always willing to accept as many patients as they can, um, and they're scheduling conflicts. It's taking too long to get that scheduled out. For dental care, it comes down to a factor of costs. It's too expensive to afford, or the dentists in the area aren't accepting our residents' insurance. For emergency care, individuals without our county feel uncomfortable going to the emergency department. And then of course, in care, it's insurance, can't afford to visit. So let's talk a little bit about what the key informants said. So these were 34 individuals throughout business, uh, business leaders, healthcare leaders, and governmental leaders throughout the county. And we asked them a set of standardized questions addressing defining a healthy community, much like the visioning exercises that we did here today what they identify as the most important health issues, what they identify as social determinants and barriers to health, who they believe are the most vulnerable groups throughout Mojave County, and then how they can see themselves and their organization addressing these issues. So when we're defining a healthy community, I think one key informant said it best, and I quote, it's a society really that has all their well-being taken care of. Their mind, body, soul, and spirit everything is well taken care of. So opportunities for active and healthy living, about 11% of our, our respondents indicate that as a driving need, that community feeling comfortable and safe, and that there be robust safety net and social services available to the residents of Mojave County. We then see a drop off for equity and inclusive access um, moving down through there. We asked our key informants what they believe the top three health issues in Mojave County are. And to quote a key informant again, 
Try to be more proactive in recruiting and retaining providers that you have here. Invest a little bit of money into the community so that it does become more of a desirable place for providers and people alike. For our social determinants of health, we're seeing from our key informants or business leaders, they'd like to drive in more resources to develop economic stability for our residents, improve the neighborhood and physical environment, and then improve the healthcare system. As one key informant put it, I think that a lot of people that I deal with, it is just the continuation of going around in circles. You know, they might get employment, yet they're still lacking affordable housing, and how long is that going to last if they can't pay rent? If they can't pay rent, then they probably don't eat. Really indicating this vicious cycle that some of our residents find themselves in due to economic instability, insecurity, homelessness, joblessness, um, and a lack of access to these supportive systems like healthcare, social services, uh, anything along that line. And then when we talk about the barriers with our key informants, as one key informant put it, I feel like Kingman area has grown so much in the last couple of years, and it's hard to sustain that growth. Largely, about 23% of our respondents think that the major barrier to move out of the way is infrastructure, community design, and more resources becoming available to enhance that healthcare system, and then a diverse range of other responses that didn't neatly bend into some of these other elements. Our vulnerable populations, uh, as our key informants kind of indicate, seniors, about 30.5% of the uh, KIs believe that they're our most vulnerable population, followed by youth and teens, and followed by those who are economically depressed, lacking a source of income, people like homeless, uh, children and infants, and low-income and poor individuals. You know, as one key informant put it, I think that seniors, children, and people with serious illnesses are the most vulnerable because we don't have the specialists here, so they have to travel. There's a lot of people that can't travel. They don't have transportation to travel, so I think they're the most vulnerable. So let's talk about the focus group. Thank you, Dania. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, uh, for actually running these focus groups. And she did a fantastic job running four focus groups, sorry, seven focus groups uh, throughout White Hills, uh, all, down, all the way down to Bullhead City. Um, and what I have on here are the three most commonly brought up elements of the conversations from those focus groups. So in White Hills, after that roundtable discussions, they want to see investments in transportation services. They want to see investments in more accessible internet services and nutrition services either delivered out like a Meals on Wheels program or that education. We see transportation being a major issue in Topak and Golden Shores as well, though they're suggesting uh, the development of rideshare programs, Nutrition pops up once again for nutrition education, recipes or services, and then information on what resources are available throughout the county. In Lake Havasu, they're really looking for a county-wide health coalition. And while this is one of the largest health coalitions in the county, we are missing some key players from these meetings. They'd like to see stigma reduction training, uh, dovetailing back into that perceived mental health need, but that uncomfortable feeling using those services and then activities and education for early childhood. Kingman also would like to see support for education and activities for early childhood and support through, for juvenile services. I'd like to see the launch of medical navigation services, which is basically a one-stop shop where you can go and get directed to what services are available and when they're ready to uh, accept new patients or individuals. Dolan Springs brings up transportation community engagement and uh, more community services. Colorado City would like to see an expansion of its recreation centers, would like to see access to specialty healthcare services, we all would, uh, and school-based behavioral health. And Bullhead City would like to see nutrition education support, barriers to remove the costs of healthcare, uh, insurance barrier removals, and then an enhancement of the pediatric care infrastructure in that region. That was Anthony Santarelli, Ph.D., Director of Research and Sponsored Programs at Kingman Regional Medical Center. We've been talking about the Community Health Improvement Plan. So, what happens next? Well, I'm glad you asked that, TJ. So today was a CHIP kickoff meeting, and that means that the next step is going to be the formation of the CHIP work groups. So all around Mojave County, we are asking that anyone that was interested in participating further either signs up for a work group or a leadership role. And if they would like to be a community champion, to please talk to Daniel Lagana, who can be reached at lagand at mojave.gov. 
Once again, if you would like to become involved in the next steps and take part in improving community health in Mojave County, please contact Danielle Lagana at L-A-G-A-N-D at mojave.gov. And that is the program. That's Focus on Your Health. I'm T.G. Lafredo. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time.